Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, we're talking about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Lethal Weapon. A great episode with a lot of interesting things that went down in it. So let's kind of break everything down. Like, the main overarching plot was about this fighter uh, named Mark who was kind of killed and he was left in the gym because basically they put enough, like, um, what, what is the word I'm looking for? A sedative in his system and put him in a fight so he's kind of like in a, a fight he couldn't win and ultimately ended up dying from it. And so it turns into this situation. Uh, it's interesting, too, because, like, the person that kind of represented him, that Parker Adams dude, is uh, play uh, Joaquin in uh, Riverdale. So I was like, oh, that's so interesting. But now, nevertheless, basically it turns into this situation of, like, what's really going on here. It turns out there's a guy named the Swede behind all of this because it turns out he thinks that... Mark stole a whole bunch of money because it turns out Mark and Frank were kind of a part of all of this, but then Frank walked away when Mark didn't. And so it's actually kind of interesting because it's kind of all ties into everybody's story, you know, both Cole's and Roger's because Roger is, you know, regaling people of this story of back in the day of him and Avery. I love that they got this 70s aesthetic, even though it literally took place like 10 years ago in 2007. Yes, I know that's not 10 years ago exactly, but still, you know, obviously they're like ballparking in that regard. But nevertheless, I thought that was kind of interesting. And I love that Roger, like he he flies over the car literally and then he does like this whole like cry like it's so like cheesy like a 70s like tv show or movie and i love it and it just like even avery being the one is saying like i'm too, i think i'm getting too old for this line it's kind of interesting i don't think roger said that the entire series i could be wrong i don't remember ever saying that in season one and season two Maybe, I don't know. So it's just kind of interesting hearing it come out of Avery's mouth, but nevertheless, but uh, Roger doing what he calls the Roger. I even love later on Trish being like, wait, you talk about the Roger? And she's like, and he's like, no, 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 not that one. I'm talking about the Roger. And it being this whole thing. And I love how cool it, how cool yet cheesy it looked. It's like, throw your black badge and they get blinded and you go, Ooh, and then do this jumping flying kick. I love that. And then everyone, like Louisa and even Scorsese, are poking fun of him. It's like, yo, so you talk about you're going to do that, but you could do it right here. And he's like, well, you don't think I can do it? Even Scorsese kind of poking fun of him because Trish is telling him, like, maybe he should consider retiring. Like, they shouldn't be kind of going as full ahead with everything as they have been. Because, like, Trish is the one that kind of set him up with kind of like, oh, yeah, talking to a class of cops and stuff like that. Like, hey, maybe we should just slow it down. But then Avery talks to Trish about the whole, like, potentially going into – being a district attorney and stuff like that, meeting with that lady Cynthia, which interestingly enough, that actress, you see her pop up in so much stuff. I was trying to remember what else I remember her from. She played one of, because it's been a while since I watched Jethro's, uh, God, uh, exes in NCIS. That was like, I want to say that was his first ex-wife, if I remember correctly. I actually think she got killed in the show. I, I think I got a glimpse of it, and that was kind of, which is kind of a bummer. But I think the most recent thing I seen her in was Outcast. She played Patricia. Even though that's kind of, that was technically a year ago, because releases and everything. Nevertheless, beside the point. But it's kind of interesting because it causes problems because while Trish is taking this exciting step forward, it's like for Roger, it's like you're telling me to teach all these classes and it's like I won't be out in the field as much anymore. And it's like you're telling me to kind of step down while you're taking this huge step forward. And she kind of gets pissed because it's like you're up here. You took this thing that was supposed to be something good for me and you turned it into part of your uh, existential crisis. She's like, I'm about to go do the Trish. And he's like, alone? And so... That was kind of interesting because, like, the entire episode, Roger started kind of feeling like, oh, maybe I'm old. Even to the point later on, Cole's like, no, nah, man, you're good. Your reflexes are great. Roger literally almost hits him with a car and everything. And Cole's like, man, see what I mean, Roger? Look at your reflexes on point. Like, because Roger was like, oh, my God, what did I do? But I guess Cole was able to dodge out of the way in time because of his own reflexes. So then Roger also got on himself because of, like, his shooting um, he's like, oh my god, I have to be perfect, and it, like, I, he did pretty damn good, but it was like, no, 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 it needs to be perfect, and then Avery later on is like, dude, do you look at your old scores with these sh with shooting? You were, you were terrible, but like, you are way better of a shot now than you were back then, and it's like, what's bad about you, it's just, you, you're not a bad detective, you just had a bad day, also, your memory's bad, he's like, the whole thing, I never had a mullet back then, he's like, yeah, I remember, got my face in the he's like, no, those are my bangs, and stuff like that, which is like, Avery with bangs, love to see that especially because he did have the mullet and everything which i'm wondering is that supposed to be kind of like a, s a slight nod to like the movies just because you know 
Uh, Mel Gibson did have a mullet and everything like that. I mean, to be fair, but uh, Danny Glover never had um, an afro. It's not to my recollection. I mean, maybe he did. I'm just blank. I don't like. Obviously, like it was very exaggerated in this case for both of them. But still, it's just it's just kind of interesting to me. I also love too to kind of add to the cheesiness. They're playing themselves ten years younger, even though it's got this '70s aesthetic and stuff like that, making it seem like it was forever ago when in actuality it wasn't that long ago. Um, but also, it's like rather than getting sight. I mean, I guess it makes sense because I guess in my head, because of the '70s aesthetic, it makes me think it's taking place further back than it is. But it is only back in 2007. Nevertheless, I'm going off on a huge tangent, so I do apologize. But that all kind of ties in with also what's going on with Cole because. Maya shows up early and she catches Cole and Erica together and it's like, no, this is my maid, Plumber. Yeah. And then like Maya's kind of not buying it. She gets suspended from school because she ended up pushing this kid and even Cole's later on like, whoa, that was that was Tommy? She beat the crap out of that dude's much bigger than her. He's almost proud of her and everything. It's like, you know, kids usually kind of, you know, act like this because, you know, what's going on at home? And Cole's like, well... Her mom's got a bit of a temper, and I love that he threw Natalie under the bus like that while he's literally got a bloody nose and a bloody hand from the fight. I also love that when they were in that fight in the place that Roger tried the Roger, and he ended up missing and kicking into the wall. I also love that Parker kind of messed with uh, Roger's head a little bit because he's like, yeah, if you read the fine print and stuff like that, and Roger's trying to read it, he's like, you need your glasses or something? He's like, nah. Uh, he's like, maybe I should take a life insurance policy on you, old man. And it's just like, kind of beat Roger down while he's already so far down. But uh, getting back to what Cole's situation was, uh, it seems like, you know, like Maya kind of snapped at him and everything, being like, oh, you might want to be careful, Erica. Like, maybe he'll get you pregnant and he'll disappear for like 12 years. And it's like, whoa. And it's kind of interesting because I was kind of under the same impression Cole was. It's like, oh, we've been good for these past six months, but... I think, you know, for him, it's like he thought it was good, but, you know, Erica had to remind him. It's like just because it's been good for these past six months doesn't erase the 12 years you weren't here. And it's like for her, it's like, yeah, me and you would keep this super casual and keep it fun and everything. But the fact of the matter is that's not something you want Maya to think about you, that you're ready, that you potentially have no roots tied down that you can leave at any moment. And that's what scared her. That's why she started acting like this now, because Natalie went off, got married and everything. Did they actually go through, did they already have the wedding? I don't remember. Cause I remember she was getting her dress and everything. I don't remember if they actually had the wedding and everything. They might have. Maybe not. I think they're still in the engaged period. But, like, obviously she went shopping for a wedding dress. But I don't think they actually had the wedding yet. But for Maya, it feels like you came back so we can be a whole family again. But the fact is that you and mom aren't really a thing. That's not working out. Then that means you have no reason to stay. But, you know, Cole was like, no, like, you are always on my mind. You are the main reason why I came back. I never think that I will ever leave you again. The fact of the matter is I am here. And that was something Erica was telling him. It's like, you got to show her that, you know, because being a dad is a full-time thing. It's a forever thing. And so you got to show her that you are willing to stick around. And he, and he tells her, you know, that. Because it, it, it's kind of a shame because it's like a big part was because he wanted to get back with Natalie to bring their family back together again. But it didn't work out like that. I do like that when it's all said and done, though, he is, because at first, because even Erica was like, yeah, this thing between us has its aspiration day. It was like, oh, so it is super just casual. It's like, oh, that's kind of a shame. But it's like, oh, kind of enjoy it while it lasts. But then it's kind of like, no, like, they kind of, it's like, well, I guess we kind of have no choice because we've already both taken steps towards it being serious because I gave you advice and you followed it. So now we have to be all mature and everything, you know, be all adult-like, but then they aren't. It's actually kind of interesting because um, Maya and, um, Erica actually bonded a little bit because Erica was in a very similar situation to Maya. It's like I acted out a lot when I was your age because my parents had gotten divorced. My dad ended up getting his own maid slash plumber, that being like a babysitter of mine. And I spent so much time hating her up until the point my dad divorced her. It's like it, it's easy because you just want to channel all your hate towards that person. You just want to make them suffer. You know, in, her, in Maya's case, it's like she wants to make her dad suffer. And for her, it's like... Erica's like, you're smarter than me at, at, as I was at your age. Maybe you'll find a better way of dealing with how you're feeling than I did. Because we don't actually know where Erica stands with her dad right now. Like, whether they actually ever... She never actually explained whether or not they're actually good right now or not. Or does she still harbor a lot of her negative feelings? I mean, we've seen her mom and their complicated relationship. I'm wondering, does the same thing kind of apply to um, still with her dad or not? We kind of potentially have to wait and see on that front, though. But Cole showing up... To save uh, Frank when he tried to 
uh, deal with the Swede on his own. I was actually kind of shocked. I was like, oh, how is this all going to play out? Like, I figured, like, I thought, because I had my completely wrong idea about how everything was going to play out in this episode, and one thought was like, oh, that, you know, for whatever reason, Cole was going to go undercover at the Fight Club or something like that, just because him being in the shape that he's in and stuff like that. But then, like, it's just like, no, he shows up. Like, this is, like, way at the beginning of the episode. That's why I thought things were going to play out like that. Turned out completely not that at all. Cole ended up getting ejected with, like, the sedative and stuff, and he's fighting the sweep like that kind of completely off his game. He did kind of fight back when the sweep was kind of winning just because it's like, you know, the thought of like, no, no, I can't leave Maya behind and got fight back. I was like, yeah, he's about to win. But he still kind of got his ass handed to him. Like, well, he's, he's got a sedative. And then lo and behold, here comes Roger coming in with the Roger and saves the day and he does the flying kick. Yeah! And then Cole was like, was that the Roger? And he's like, uh, you know, close enough. And then he tells the story later on. Cole was like, it was, it was almost over for me. And then a shirtless god came to my rescue. And then Roger is there shirtless. And he's like, he just got Roger. And then American flag flies behind him. And it's like, wait, there was no, where is like, Avery's like, wait, where's the flag come from? And Luis is like, yeah, and he wasn't shirtless. And it's like, come on, guys, I'm just telling you what I saw. And it's like, and then Avery's like, you did it. You did it, Roger. Because he literally was telling Roger early. Because Roger was like, do you think I can do it? So do Roger. He's like, oh, Roger, you could never do to Roger. <laughs> And it's like, hey, so did he do it or not? It's hard to say. Like, we got one view of it. It looked like he did it. But, I mean, to be fair, Cole himself was high at the time on those sedatives. So who's to say w what we saw was what he actually saw, like, in the sense of, like, I don't know. Roger walks away with pride. So it's like, it kind of seemed like he did do it. Not unless that was all exactly from Cole's high perspective. But either way, that was kind of uh, nicely done in that regard. So... Um, kind of tying up everyone's stories, like you had, like, Cole and Maya, and I love her, him kind of embarrassing her and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, maybe I should wait out here for you, and she's like, dad, that's being a creeper, don't, don't do that, and even the vice principal looking at him, and he's kind of, like, giving her the thumbs up and everything, and she's kind of looking at him, like, okay, sure, we'll, we'll see what happens in this regard, so, um, but things are kind of looking better in there, in that situation, he's even looking for an apartment to kind of show that he is setting down roots and stuff. So that's nice. And then Trish's whole situation with being, you know, the district attorney. Roger's supporting her in that. And, you know, it's like, hey, your next act will be, you know, governor, then president, then the pope. So that's kind of nice to see them kind of trickling in that direction. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what the next episode has in store. As I brought up before, I think... Next week's episode is the season finale because I think there's only supposed to be 13 episodes this season, just kind of with everything that's going on, like outside the show. In particular, like Damon Wayans, just like the whole Myrtle character situation. I'm curious to see what they end up doing because he's potentially leaving the show and where that leaves the show and everything, whether the show's coming back for a fourth season or not. Also, like whether he's going, you know, like I said, what he's going to come back or not. So that's why I'm curious, like where everything's going to fall, like potentially, if it is the season finale. He had said 13 episodes, but I don't know whether it's like the show's kind of like that's all he's doing. That's not necessarily the end of the season. The show is going to continue for the rest of its seasons, potentially. I don't know. Like, I haven't really looked into it. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what goes down next episode, whether it be the season finale or not. But like I said, I think it is, but I could be wrong. So we'll ultimately have to wait and see what ends up happening, like I said, with all of that, but, you know, with the direction everything's going, it's taking a very interesting route, so I'm sure, I'm curious to see how they end up playing it all out. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, we'll fight to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good.